How did you manage to audit 115 code bases in a year? That's about till the 10 month crazy pace and consistency. I'd like to know more about how many days you audit a month, hours spent daily strictly on auditing, and also what had the biggest impact on you leveling up as an auditor. I told myself from the beginning I would audit at least 100 code bases before I would let myself give up so that goal helped to motivate me even when I didn't want to audit. As for timing, I rarely ever spend more than 6 hours in a single day strictly auditing because I've noticed my productivity is very low after that point. I spent an average of 21 days each month auditing. November was the month I audited the most days with a total of 29 audit days and January was my lowest at only 4 audit days. Biggest level up was doing Lead Watson for Sherlock. That pushed me to levels that I didn't even know was possible for me. The biggest help was reviewing everyone else's submissions at the end because I was so in tune with the code base at that point. Could you elaborate your auditing strategy? It's pretty fluid overall but usually I take the following approach. 1. Thoroughly go into the README. 2. Open all files in VS Code. 3. Review each briefly to try to figure out what it does. 4. Rearrange the order of the open contract so it makes more sense but I only do this when I have lots of contracts. 5. Review each contract thoroughly and comment heavily. 6. Start reviewing all areas I marked as an issue. 7. Mark each phone with a note and small amount of detail. 8. Make sure everything I marked as an issue is addressed. 9. Double check everything I marked a vulnerability. 10. Work on the report. It's more of a personal, but I really like to know your favorite book, author, and movie. I'm not an avid reader or movie watcher. When I do consume media, it's primarily for entertainment. I'm much more likely to pick up a video game than a book or watch a movie. For books, I enjoy the Stormlight Archive series by Brandon Sanderson. For movies, I'm a fan of Parasite. When it comes to video games, I love Oxygen Not Included and Winworld. I couldn't choose just one. I'm quite curious on how you handle your burnouts. Some people have them, and some can keep going 24-7 no problem. Do you personally experience burnouts? If so, how do you tackle them? I haven't experienced burnout too often. I love auditing and it feels more like a hobby than a job. The worst burnout I've ever had was when I took a two-week break and came back feeling completely refreshed. You also said that you didn't know much about coding or the tools when you started out. How did you learn them? Was there ever a moment when you felt overwhelmed and thought that this wasn't for you? I've always had a, how can I bend the rules, type of mindset my entire life so that portion of auditing has always felt natural to me and I knew it was the field for me. The biggest issue I had was understanding what the code was telling me, at first it felt like reading a foreign language. That was a bit discouraging, but the thrill of finding bugs always motivated me. What is your background? How does it help with auditing? My most relevant experience to auditing is actually video games. I used to double quotes Minute Max which is a character building strategy of maximizing a specific desirable ability, skill, or other power of a character and minimizing everything else, seen as undesirable, requires you to understand the game and its mechanics very deeply. Since they are also code understanding a game to that degree and a code base to audit are much more similar than you would think. So in some ways I've been honing the mindset for years. How do you focus? What is your workflow while doing an audit? Pre-workout helps a lot. I've had lots of people tell me after that the L-theanine is what helps with the focus. The other thing is I try never to audit when I don't want to audit. I find it better to take the day off than to force myself. How do you learn most effectively? I learn best by tinkering around with code. Much easier for me to understand how something works by physically seeing it work or not work. Hey 52, I noticed that you are very good at mapping all the possible scenarios that could happen with the functionalities in a protocol. I mean, checking for zero input, transferring with checkpoints, things like that. Could you give me some advice on how you draw or list all the possibilities for a protocol? 
What is your approach to threat modeling protocols? I have a mental model of the code base. After I load it into my brain, I start to look for places that seem weak or wrong to me, for example, key parameters that don't have any safeguards. How to deal with manage large code bases? I like to split large code bases functionally across multiple VS Code windows. This helps me keep the everything organized and accessible. What stos do you keep track when auditing? Do you find tracking stats helps? I keep track of the audit, the time spent, the number and severity of submissions, how I think I performed, subjectively, the estimated payout, the actual payout, if it's a contest, my personal goals and achievements, and the monthly summaries of all those things. It definitely helps. It's nice to look back at the previous data for some encouragement, but it's not a decisive factor for me. I see that you participate in about 80% of the running audits. How do you handle multiple contests that run at the same time? Do you focus on one contest and quickly move to the other? Or do you audit multiple contests in parallel? I try to make sure I give at least 70% on every contest I do. For the contests I lead, I aim for around 85% minimum. I almost never work on them simultaneously. I usually finish one completely before moving to the next. The first step is the hardest. If I want to be a smart contract auditor, what knowledge should I have and where did you learn all the knowledge from YouTube, Twitter, or Udemy courses? I've learned 95% of everything I know from contests and personal testing in Remix. Doing is how I learn. Have you thought about giving a shot at bug bounties? I have thought about it, but the pay of other opportunities, contests, private audits, etc., has always been lucrative enough to take up almost all of my time. I may try them if other opportunities become less interesting. How do you measure your double quotes ready to get on the next one? I don't finish an audit until I feel like I understand the logic and have checked everything that raised my concern. I mark things with an audit issue and review and close each one of them. Do you read the submissions of others after the contest? Nowadays only if I put a lot of effort into the contest. If not then usually it's more work than it's worth. Most of the time when I review findings I missed on a code base like that it's very easy for me to absorb since I already know the code base so well. When I first started I would read them for every single contest though. How do you pick contests? Normally I would do as many contests as possible. I would plan out each one with a specific number of days then fit as many as possible in my schedule. As an example most contests with less than 50k prize pool I will only look at for a single day. That's how I used to operate but still trying to figure out how to balance contests with private audits and spearbit at the moment. If you had to start your auditing journey over, what would you do differently? Really hard to say. So much of what makes me the auditor I am was the process. I can't say I regret anything I did. Some things didn't work out but what I learned was always valuable. The only thing I would change is to push myself out of my comfort zone earlier and to enjoy the process more. So if we look at what helped you the most, next to mindset and going super cyan. Is it reading contests and submissions? Yes, but specifically reading submissions for contests that I went deep on. It's much harder to learn anything if you aren't very familiar with the code base.